the Joe Rogan experience? With Grush, I think... Here's my take on it. I think he believes what he's saying, right? I think he has gone out there. I think I'm legit. Look, he was a, whatever, 14-year veteran of military and and, the National Reconnaissance Office. And, And I think he went out and he talked to enough people and he... Uh, he believes it. I don't think he's out there like spinning a, a yarn and is worried that now he's gotten over his skis and he's said, you know, too many things. And now he, I, but um, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't feel like it's tidy. And maybe the difference between us is I, I spent, you know, a lot of time with the government and um, the government is, is, uh, is sometimes can be really, really uh, dysfunctional. And I just, it goes back to keeping a secret. The idea that they could have this, this what essentially is a covert action campaign, you know, to spread this information about what they actually know, right? When the easier thing to do is just to have the program, you know, if, if, if again, if it's, it's the U.S. government's, you know, development of technology, right, and, and, and we're doing this, to have the program and just keep your app shut about it, not go for a disinformation campaign, not try to muddy the waters by doing this, because in a sense, you're just creating more conversation around it. You're creating, you know, now there's a little bit of a, you know, movement within Congress to say, we have to do this, now we have to, so they're gonna look perhaps for a misappropriation of funds, right? Because mm-hmm. they're not gonna pursue like the UAP issue necessarily, right? But, but they might be interested in pursuing misappropriation of funds. So if you're running a program, if it, if it didn't, again, going back to the idea that it's a U.S. government thing, if you're running a program, that's the last thing you want to do is because you've, you're, you're doing this program to avoid government oversight. You're not going to create, you know, this alternative narrative that, you know, could generate the sort of publicity or the conversation, particularly up on Capitol Hill, that causes them to then start looking and saying, well, where is money being spent? Right. Right. Because there is a trail there and that could right. cause a problem. Um, so, yeah. Um, what, so what yeah. are your instincts? When you look at it, if I'm, um, if I'm looking at it, I'm saying something's wrong, it seems like bullshit, what, mm-hmm. is, what, are, what are your instincts? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I would like to, uh, you know, I don't think we're going to get there, but my instinct w- is to say how do, we solve the, how do we solve this or how do we, how do we come to some sort of uh, logical resolution as opposed to saying what is it right off the bat. My instinct is to say, all right, if the all-domain... <laughs> anomalous or anomaly resolution office has 800 cases then tell us what those 800 cases are let's work our way through them or have a little bit more transparency about working through those cases again you'll probably whittle them down right to i mean we were doing black files and we were going around talking to people about you know various sightings and things you're basically just crossing things off going okay that was this that was this that was mm-hmm. this you know you find some pretty mundane answers you know but you whittle it down to maybe one or two things that you can't explain, and then you can investigate those and say, okay, well, all right, let's 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 dig further on these. But right now it's just like all over the map, and they've got so many cases, and they just kind of lump it all together. Um, are they doing that to, to obfuscate and create, you know, uh, this 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 situation where it, it does seem like bullshit? And, and I, again, I, I, I don't know, but I think um, I'm not willing to shut the door on saying that, that those – handful of those few sightings that where we do have technical data we got video we got you know radar lock we got we got gun camera footage whatever it may be that can't be explained i'm not willing to close the door and saying well it's you know you know is it because who knows maybe china's doing the same thing you know oh we're leading the hypersonic race right now great but they've got another program you know and they were responsible for the tic tac right so we, we we have to pursue it and if that leads us to the doorstep that says oh that's a u.s government program and they've developed the technology okay you know fine but you know i realize that you know i i just i'm not willing to close the door on saying it could be something else it could be otherworldly Right, because I just, yeah. I just don't it know. It could be. It could be. I just there, don't know. There yeah, is who a, knows? that problem of yeah. the infinite nature of space, which seems to actually be getting bigger. Yeah, there was yeah. a good way of putting it that uh, that uh, uh, my wife, who's uh, a hell of a lot smarter than I am, um, tried to explain it to me, and I kept looking at it like this. And, she, and but she had heard a she had heard a program at one point where the the person explained it like, okay, imagine 
how vast the ocean is, right? And, you know, how you, 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 we've explored the ocean. But then you look at space and how immense it is, right, compared to the ocean, right? Right. The amount that we've explored in space, right, is equivalent to like a wine glass full of ocean water, right? So you take a wine glass full of ocean water, you look at it and you go, eh, there's nothing there, right? right? You know, there's all those life forms. <laughs> there's all, that, right. all those fish in the sea. It's kind of like that. And then, you know, you think about space and you think about what we know and what we don't know. And how we imagine, like our limited capacity to imagine what life outside of Earth could look like. Right. So it, it, yeah. But when you hear talk of like crashed retrieval programs. Yeah. That, that keeps taking me back and is, you know, to this, this whole idea of um, if there was a crash retrieval and reverse engineering program like David Gresh talked about and had been in existence for decades, um, Somebody would have fucking opened their yap and talked about it. I think I, that's, other than Bob Lazar, other than Bob Lazar, and they would have had some better specifics, right? I mean, that's always the thing. That's it's always where it falls down. Well, I haven't seen it, but I talked to somebody who knows that it exists, right? And I think maybe it's because we're human, we're programmed to actually want physical evidence, yeah. right? We want to actually see it before we believe it. Um, but. You know, that, that really hasn't happened yet. What's one of the things that's fascinating is the narrative has shifted so wildly from it's completely preposterous to credible people like David Fravor and Ryan Graves and all these different people that are talking about multiple sightings, things that completely defy our understanding of what a vehicle is capable of doing, hovering yeah. completely motionless in 120 knot winds, uh, all the, the whole you know, whatever that thing is, the, the cube inside a sphere that they keep yeah. seeing over and over again. Right. Like Almost when, hit one of the aircraft. Yeah. You know, and, and, what the yeah. fuck is that? Yeah. And then they land. So I think, you know, one of the good developments out of all of this and one of the things that may eventually lead to transparency, right, because it will, it will provide an avenue for these sightings, whether it's commercial or military pilots, as an example, to report it. Right. And to be more and, and, and for the government to take it, perhaps, you know, again, it depends on whether, <laughs> whether it's a big conspiracy or not to um, to investigate in a, in a, in a more logical manner and in, in, in a more detailed manner. So I, I think just, again, the sheer act that we're talking about it, which then takes me back to the idea that, you know, if you're running a secret program, you don't want people talking about it. So you're not going to muddy the waters with a false narrative if you don't have to. Right. You know, if your concern is that someone's getting close to the truth and you got to do it, OK, then maybe so. But, um, you know, do you think it's also possible that there are patriots that do think that the American public deserves to know about this information and they have been sitting on it for a long time? Um, the people like yeah. David Grush and all these various people that are coming out and more apparently are wanting to come out. But. Yeah. Well, interesting thing with Grush is, look, he's, he said so during the hearing, right? He said, I can't talk about that. I could talk about it in a skiff, right? In, yes. a, in a sensitive and uh, secure uh, environment. All right. Well, if I'm, you know, one of the people on on that subcommittee, I'm going to say, you know what, uh, to my staff, schedule, uh, you know, a skiff meeting with Grush. Get him in here mm -hmm. and let's, you know, have him talk uh, classified shit. Right. Um so that would be the next logical step in all of this, Have they right? done that yet? I, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know. It's, when he said, <laughs> uh, I could talk to you about it in a skiff, has, have people taken him up on that? Well, I, I, you know, they, you'd have to, you you'd have to ask him. No, I wouldn't. Right, know. and they yeah. wouldn't tell anybody. And they wouldn't, anyway. and they wouldn't tell him. And therein lies part of the problem because right. if, if he sits there and – but if he sits in the skiff and, and continues to kind of say, well, I, you know, okay, I, I don't, you guys aren't clear to, to hear this and I can't uh, – all right. right. Then, then you got to start questioning, you know what he's actually got or what he what he knows for sure rather right. than just having this this you know witness interviews and sort of secondhand information but i am i'm much more i guess the point is i'm much more interested in the direct sightings than uh witness interviews right right and the thing about him is he's not really a witness right he hasn't had any personal encounters with anything Right. He hasn't had personal encounter with a craft he hasn't seen a retrieved craft he hasn't seen the biological entities these are all just programs that he's been made aware of that he felt like people needed to know about. Yeah. And That's the narrative. And, I, and I, again, not to disparage anybody, right? I mean, right. Look, he's, you know, if in fact, um, you know, uh, somebody leaked his medical records, which it looks like, you know, did happen, right? Then that's, that, you know, that's, that's pretty bullshit, right? 
Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to <laughs> figure out what the hell is hey, happening let's see there. This. The information from Grush, who said he was unable to discuss specifics on what he told the Pentagon's watchdog arm. Lawmakers want to sit down with the former official in a sensitive compartmented information facility, a skiff, to get additional information from him. The group has been blocked, however, by officials that have informed them that Grush doesn't currently have security clearance to discuss the issues in a skiff, according to Burchett. We think that we'll get there eventually. It's just frustrating. I'm ready to go, and the American public are ready to go, he said. Luna argued that the skiff with Grush could help lawmakers better understand the type of legislation they need to write regarding UAPs. She said she supports legislation that would declassify information on the phenomenon. So there seems to be some issue of secrecy and what, what's possible to discuss or what's legal to discuss. Well, but yeah, look, the, the government casts a very wide net when you're talking about classified information, right? right. I mean, the, the government has overclassified information for decades and decades, right? And you've got secret, top secret, you know, code word, you know, um, and, you know, they, they tend to just hoover everything up and classify it, right? And, and then it takes fucking forever, right, to go through that process of declassification. And, and because nobody wants to put their neck out at that point and say, yeah, let's declassify this, right? right. Once, it's, once it's in that pot. Um, so, but it, the, the question is, great, you know, you're saying, you know, you can talk about it in the skiff. Well, damn it, then that's the next, that's, that's what the subcommittee should be doing. Right? That's their job, right? If they're curious, right? And if they're sincere about trying to get to the bottom of this, and that's theoretically their job, then they should, because again, going back to the main thing, and people can say, well, why are you wasting your time on this? But you can always circle back to the top line, which is, it's for national security purposes. We want to know what the hell's going on. Right. And, and you know, if so, yeah, we'll see. I guess that's the, that's the question that should be thrown at, at Grush or should be thrown at the subcommittee members. Is, I'm also shocked <laughs> at how few people care. I feel like people are so overloaded with information today because of social media and because of the news cycle. You're just so, people are so overloaded with information that this barely registered on people other than UFO nuts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a there was a surprising amount, I thought anyway, of of sort of mainstream media coverage. It wasn't particularly uh, deep, right? It just kind of covered. Okay, it was a hearing, and I think they did it because oh, look, it's UFOs or UAPs, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know they knew they'd get some clicks on it if they were putting it online or whatever, and and. Uh, they didn't pursue it, you know, like has there been any, I haven't seen any stories that talked about the follow-up right. with Grush. Um, there were a couple of stories talking about the, you know, the, the fact that perhaps his medical records were leaked, you know, as a result And the of medical this. records showed what? That he had some sort of a psychiatric condition? Um, that he had an event or something like that? PTSD, uh, I think he, you know, some suicidal depression issues. Standard I think. stuff with military veterans. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had been, he had done his time in Afghanistan, yeah. right? And so, um, that doesn't, yeah, it means nothing, and uh, except nothing. for the fact that it shouldn't be out there, right? right. Those records should be damn well private. Well, not but, only that, isn't that what we want? Why don't you shut your little dinger off there, fellow? Is that is that me going that's off? you. Yeah, that's why your phone rang, too. What the too. hell? God, you gotta learn how to use that little switch on the side. Um, <laughs> but that, Thank you for my IT lesson. Isn't that what you want from, I mean, that's the whole purpose of providing these services for veterans. That when they do have suicidal, th suicidal thoughts and they are struggling with PTSD, that they get help. I mean, the, the idea that they're yep. shaming him and saying that his report is not credible because of this seems it's ridiculous. Bullshit. Yeah. It's totally bullshit. Yeah. And, and, and he said, he, he, he's come out since and said, look, I did seek help. I, you know, I'm in a better place. Um, and he was happy that people were talking about it. They should be talking about yes. it. Look, it's, we, we, we lose a shocking number of veterans to suicide, yes. right? And it's disgusting that we don't, you know, that the government doesn't work harder at this, right? And right. spend more effort. You know I, know, I know a couple of people who do amazingly good work at the VA in, in terms of counselors, right? They're not managers, they're not executives. They work with the veterans every day, right? And it's incredible what they do. But uh, overall, as a, as a government, our... Our assistance, right, to veterans. Um, I mean, you look at the number of homeless situation. It, it, it's 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 pathetic. And so when he talks about it, um, it's it, it's good that he's talking about it, right? I think that that transparency helps, and, and and he clearly views it that way too. And he said, look, I I don't have any problem with with discussing it, but we should be concerned by the fact that you know somehow his medical records were were put out there. 
And then, you know, some people will look at that and go, well, is that the government's effort to discredit them? You know, or is that or, or is that somebody's effort to discredit them? Um, I, I don't know why anybody else would. Why would you do that? 